Hi guys, it's Sam here with Bargain Hunting Blonde and it is long time no see. I know I have not been on the platform for a little bit. I've been active on Instagram, but life has just taken over. So a little bit of a life update. Uh, spent a lot of time buying furniture, outdoor, indoor, uh, new car. Um, the company that I was like loaned to, which is called a secondment in like the legal world, I am still at, um, so my secondment was extended, so I'll be there for a full year. So that has been really crazy because uh, more people from the team have left. So, you know, we are very, very thinly staffed. And so my life has just been taken over by work and just life commitments, but I am back. I'm here. I am going to, I think, spread out the videos now a little more. So I'm going to be putting out one video a week instead of two just so there's more content coming in case I can't get in and film as often, which really bums me out because I love to sit in my closet with all my bags. Um, but such is life. Um, I actually do have a desk in here, so I could work in here, uh, but I have just been working downstairs for the time being. So without further ado, let's dive in to this new series I'm starting, which is called Luxury At or Under $500. So I was talking to some of you guys and some fellow YouTubers about just how expensive luxury has gotten. Um, we all know luxury is expensive, right? But now we're seeing Chanel flat bags at like $11,000, which even three years ago, were nowhere nearing those prices. So I have been turning to looking at smaller fashion houses that have good quality products, but are just not in the range of ten thousand plus dollars i just think that's kind of ridiculous i also have always loved as you guys can kind of see around me more vintage pieces so i definitely have started looking more at those as well um and i think you know there are some brands and products that we're willing to pay more for and you know there's some that aren't so uh, i think you know in doing that calculus it made me realize there's some really great bags out there that are not from these giant fashion houses so that's what this series is going to be about. I have a long list from you guys of bags to review. Um, I will be buying a lot of them. I was actually gifted the one I'm reviewing today, but most of them I have already purchased. Um, I'm not buying too many because I don't need that many new bags. So I do actually have some in my collection that you may not have seen or that I will be updating a review about that are under the $500 mark. Or some are like just around the $500 mark, but I have tips to get them closer and or under $500, so I'll explain. First is this bag from Atelier Auguste. I think that's how you say it. I am not French, so I do apologize. You will have seen this bag on my Instagram Reels if you follow me on Instagram because it's a lot easier to get out a reel than a video. But this bag is the Sully Half Moon Gold Edition, and this is the regular size. So this is not the mini. Uh, some people ask me that on my reveal unboxing on Instagram. This is the full size and it is the gold edition, which means it does have this really nice gold hardware, excuse me, at the front. So this bag does retail for $551, but if you sign up for their newsletter, which I would recommend you do, you get 5% off. So that's going to bring you much, much closer to the $500 mark. I was gifted this, which was very, very nice of the brand. Uh, I think this might have been the first thinking, I think this is the first handbag I've ever been gifted, which is really cool. Very exciting. Uh, they reached out to me and I actually had already been looking at their items because I was working on getting my collection of, you know, bags that are 500 or under for this series purpose. So I was very happy to get this gifted from them. Okay. Measurement wise, this is a half moon shape. As you guys can see, it is height of seven inches. It is a diameter of three inches, so it's pretty deep, which is nice. And then the width of the bag is, if I can read my own handwriting, I cannot. Oh, nine inches. Good job, self. Learn how to write. Uh, <laughs> so I do like to write everything down because my phone does turn off really quickly. Um, and I have a iPhone, this is 11 Pro, and it dies. It's battery at full charge is only at 73% and I really need to upgrade it. My husband's like, Sam, just upgrade it. But I am team, I'd rather spend money on handbags than technology, so this will have to die before I get a new phone. Though I will say the touch screen is going, which is very annoying. Uh, the weight of this bag is 1.25 pounds, which is a good weight. So you, like, you can feel the bag is there, but it's not like heavy by any means. Um, and the adjustable strap, which I currently have on the inside, which this is, this looks like um kind of like a push lock as like the Celine box bag, but actually really easily just is magnetic and flips up. 
So the strap that I have in the bag, because that's how I have been storing it, is adjustable, as you guys can see right there with those little pegs, which is very nice. So the adjustability of the strap varies from 43 inches to 46.5 inches, which now that I'm thinking about that, I think they might have said they were inches, but I believe that's actually probably centimeters because that would be a very, very long strap. And the strap's long, but I don't think it's that long. There are, inside of this bag, a couple pockets. So let me take out, I do keep, as you guys know, everything stuffed. So regardless of Hermes down to, you know, just a random raffia bag, I keep everything stuffed. That's how you keep your bags in good condition. So you do have two pockets. You have this front thinner pocket and then this much bigger, like back pocket. This bigger pocket does have a leather pocket on the front. So like you could put card ID in there and then a phone that is more of a bigger slip pocket that does fit my phone in there. So when I have been using this bag, I do like to put my phone there so I know where it is. Uh, though a lot of times I will have my personal phone out with me and then I will have my work phone in that slot. I also like that it's near the back so I can feel it if it vibrates, which is nice. There is no back pocket on this bag. You just have the name of the atelier right there and a stamp on the back. So it is very uh, subtle. You're not gonna see it at all in the front. Though you do have, if you look very closely at the gold, I don't know if it'll show up on camera, but it, there is some, the name of the fashion house right there. Um, but it just reflects a lot in the ring light that I have that I'm filming with. I think this bag is a very nice leather. It is what they consider a premium calf leather and it is water resistant, which is great. So this bag can 100% get rained on and you will be in good shape. And I can definitely feel that with the texture of the bag. It does have more of a box leather finish, which I love. Um, I know that's not everyone's favorite thing, but you'll see with this leather versus like a really true box, there is more graining. So I think it would disguise more of the scratches you are getting on the leather if you are scratching your bag. The bag is handmade in Italy and the lining, which you guys will have seen when I was showing you the pockets, is 100% cotton twill. So it is a cotton lined bag, which does make the bag a little lighter in my opinion than if it was fully leather lined. I do not mind cotton leather lining, but I did want to highlight that because I know for some people that's a no. Again, I don't mind. Uh, I really do love this bag. You have a couple more mentions of the brand name on the buckle right there, but all very subtle, giving me very Parisian vibes. So this bag is designed in Paris and made in Italy. Like I said, it is handmade, which is really nice and something that we are missing at some of those higher price points from the really big luxury fashion houses. So let's go over kind of what I would carry in this bag that would easily fit. So, sorry about that guys. I by accident turned off my camera with my phone because I had connected the two and didn't realize it. So, I was talking about how initially I'd be putting both my phones in here, which they are both in there, and then I wanted to kind of experiment with to show you guys what else would fit in here. So let's say we have a smaller wallet. This is the Zippy Coin from Louis Vuitton. That definitely fits in here. And that's if I didn't want to take everything out and put it in this front slip pocket or put it in this other thinner pocket as well. Then you do have the mini pochette, which I probably actually could like wedge in here. Let me let me try to get a little creative. I wouldn't normally probably try to fit like all of this in here um, at once just because I have really overstuffed my mini pochette. Um, so let's say I kind of stack my phones a little bit more and get this guy. Let's put one phone in the front pocket. So I'll show you what I am stuffing in here as I'm doing it in a second. I just want to show you guys kind of what I would be putting in here. Um, so this is it with my two phones and the mini pochette. Um, as I said, my mini pochette is very swollen. <laughs> Let me show you guys. Like you can kind of see on the sides, like there's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so it's probably more than a lot of people are putting in their mini pochettes, which means that if I get the mini pochette in here, which it fits easily with my phone, I'm not going to be able to get this mini zippy or zippy coin wallet in here. So then I need to go with more of like a little card holder, like this little Vera Bradley pochette that I have, which will fit in here with the everything else. So, sorry, it's, it's kind of ugly in there at the moment. But the bag does still easily close. That's with two phones, the mini pochette, and more of like a card holder style wallet. You can see the phone a little bit right there on the front. Uh, I don't think two pe people are normally carrying around two phones. So let's say we take out one of the phones. You can then move this little, more like a card holder, into the front. 
I'll zip it up so it looks a little prettier to the eye because it was open. I'm currently putting receipts in there, so it's not actually my wallet, but see that all fits in there easily. You could easily get a sunglasses on top of here. Um, clothes, again, is magnetic closure, no problem. And that's a little less harsh on the front. You don't really see that like you did the phone. But you could also, if you were thinking about, you know, hey, this mini pochette, especially the way, Sam, with all the stuff you have in it, is too thick. So let's see what else could fit in here. I wanted to see if I could get this much longer wallet from Louis Vuitton. This is the Clements wallet. So it is not as tall as some of their other zippy wallets, but it's long. And this fits in here so perfectly. Like, this can fully hold. That is a full-size long wallet. You could definitely still get some other things in there. You have your little sippy pouch in the front, and you could definitely get sunglasses in here. So this bag is not like pack everything in the kitchen sink. It is not a tote bag, right? But it is a smaller crossbody that still holds a lot, and you don't really have to like maneuver much in and out of it, which I really appreciate about it. So again, lots of pockets, and I wasn't really used a lot of seeing the pockets, but that back one. So pros for me after having used this bag for a little bit. First is it's very classic. So I think it really has a great Parisian look to it. I think that's really nice. You know, it's very understated, but you can still tell it's a nicer bag. I mean, look at the shine off that leather from the ring light. It's just really pretty. Next, which I think is huge, is it's water resistant. So if you're looking for a bag that you can literally wear anywhere, all times of the year, this is definitely it. I know that a lot of the bags we like to buy in the luxury community are not all weather, and that can make it really hard when you live somewhere that rains a lot. Typically the Bay Area doesn't, but this year we've gotten so much rain. Like this is May and it is raining right now. I don't know if you can hear it, but it is raining outside. So something to consider is that this is water resistant, which is really great. And then lastly, which I think is a big plus, is the adjustable strap. I think a lot of bags and a lot of companies in order to save money have just stopped making straps adjustable. And I think that's really unfortunate for people who are of different heights. I tend to be on the okay side because I'm like a giant. So it works for me to be able to have a really long strap, like that's fine. But on a lot of other people, it just really doesn't work. So I'm very happy that this has an adjustable strap and will kind of suit all body shapes and heights and sizes and all of that. And then cons. So this bag does put you a little over the $500 price point. So if you're really trying to be cost conscious and you really want to stay under $500, even with the 5% off, you're not going to be under $500 on this bag. So there's that to consider. Also, I love box leather, but I will fully admit, I know that is not everyone's cup of tea. And like I said, this is a little more grained than a true box, but it is still a box leather. So if that's not your thing, if you're worried about scratches, this might not be for you. Again, I think if you're someone who's using a bag all the time, this is going to be very durable. But if you're someone who is using a bag and hoping never to see scratches on it, like I just find that unrealistic because there will be times when by accident you're going to scratch your bag. And at least with this being black, you're going to be able to probably color correct those scratches and make it way less visible. So this is the first bag in my luxury at or under 500 series. And like I said, this is slightly over, but make sure you sign up for the newsletter if you're interested in their bag so you can get it under. They have a lot of other great styles that are under $500. So this is just a good bag brand to go look at in general. I really loved the quality of this bag. The shipping was so fast, which was great. Uh, I have found actually that I tend to get things faster from Europe than I do from just like East Coast. Um, they get to me like within two to three days, which I think is absolutely great. Uh, so make sure that you go check out their website, which I'll link down below. Uh, this bag and then just like their website in general if you want to go browse. I'm really pleased with this. I think it's a really great bag. I definitely t plan, excuse me, not tend, plan on using this when the weather outside is not so nice and I have been using it even though the weather has been nice and it's been great in both scenarios. So if you want to see more videos like this, which I will be putting up one a week, please make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Thank you so much for tuning in today, guys, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.